Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be focusing on one of the great ancient Greek philosophers Aristotle and his theory of causation. Great. Now, Aristotle was an empiricist. He concerned himself with a posteriori knowledge. Aristotle studied the empirical world around him in order to develop his philosophy and seek the truth. This is why many regard Aristotle as one of the greatest scientists as well as a philosopher. This is unlike his teacher Plato, who believed that truth can be discovered through a priori knowledge and through reason. Plato was a rationalist and believed reason was the source of truth without the need for external experience. Yes, that is right, but Aristotle firmly believed that true knowledge must come from within the empirical world. I see. Now, after studying and observing the empirical world, Aristotle noticed that every organism is in a state of constant change, a state of flux, as you might describe it. Everything is constantly moving or changing in some way. Right. Because everything is changing, Aristotle argued that everything is moving towards some sort of goal, some sort of purpose or end, delos, as he referred to it. He argued that all properties either possess potentiality or actuality, i.e. something possesses the potential to reach its purpose or it has actually reached its purpose. Let's imagine a seed. This has the potential to become a lovely plant and when it becomes a plant, it has reached its delos. It has reached its actuality of a plant. Yes, I understand. However, Aristotle argued that as everything is in a constant state of change, this change must be caused. In order for us to truly have knowledge of a certain thing, we need to know its cause, how it has come to be, and how it goes from its potentiality to its actuality. In order to answer this, Aristotle developed the four causes. What are the four causes? We have the material cause, the efficient cause, the formal cause, and the final cause. Right. So let me explain them further. Let's take an inanimate object, a wooden chair. The material cause is the material the thing is made of. So for the chair, the material would be the wood. Now wood alone is not enough to make a chair. Of course. Then we have the formal cause. This is the actual form or shape the thing needs to be in order to reach its delos. So for the chair, the formal cause would be the four legs and a seat. The material needs the form in order to reach its purpose. Yes, I see. From there, we need the efficient cause. The efficient cause is the external agent which causes the change in the material so it can turn into its desired form. So for the chair, the efficient cause would be the carpenter, the one who gathered the materials, visualized the form, and fashioned the materials into this form. And what is the fourth cause? Well, this is the final cause. This is the end, the delos, when a certain thing has reached its actuality and is fulfilling its purpose. So for the chair, if people can sit on it, it has reached its final cause. I see. Very interesting. So you, your existence can be traced to the four causes. Your DNA would be your material cause. The human shape is your formal cause. Your parents are your efficient cause. And you living, breathing and existing is your final cause as a human being. Hmm. Aristotle believed everything in the empirical world, including the empirical world itself, goes through the four causes. For Aristotle, the four causes was the way to understand the world. It discovers the why in our world. It allows us to reach the truth as to why something is in existence and understand its cause. Using this method of thinking, the subject of science grew exponentially over the years, allowing us to discover and understand the way our fascinating world works. Here's the problem I see. If everything is changing and relies on the four causes to come into existence, then how did the universe itself come into existence? Before the universe there was nothing, so how could there have been the causes to bring everything about and start the continuous process? Well, Aristotle disagreed that before the universe there was nothing. In fact, Aristotle did not believe there was a before the universe. He believed the universe was eternal. Aristotle did not believe the universe came into existence. He did not think time and motion comes into existence. 
He saw this as a contradiction. How could there be a before if there is no time? So for Aristotle, the universe has always existed and was never brought into existence. I can understand that. But then, if the universe was not created and was not brought into existence, where does the motion and the change come from? Aristotle is asking us to adopt a belief in a universe of eternal change and flux where absolutely everything, all organisms, are moving to a delos. Where would this motion come from? This is where Aristotle brings up the prime mover. What's that? Broadly speaking, the prime mover would be God. It is an immaterial, unchanging and eternal being that is responsible for all the motion and change in the universe. So Aristotle believed the prime mover started everything off. It was the first cause that started the chain. Not exactly. Aristotle believed the universe was eternal, so there was no first cause. But rather, the prime mover was considered the attractor. For Aristotle, God does not start the movement off by physically getting involved and giving it a push. But rather, the prime mover is a being that attracts all the motion in the universe. It draws all movement and change. Like a moth moving towards a bright light, the light causes the moth to move towards it. So in a sense, every changing being is moving closer to the prime mover. And as the prime mover attracts this motion, it leads all the entities from their potentiality to their actuality. So as trees grow, or stars move, or planets orbit, this change, this motion, is just movement towards the prime mover. I see. So then, with the prime mover, we can understand the constant and eternal state of flux in the universe. Now, of course, Aristotle's idea of God vastly differs from the Judeo-Christian understanding. Whereas the Judeo-Christian belief is very much of a first mover, a being that caused the first motion and began the universe, as well as a conscious moral being that can intervene in the world. Aristotle's prime mover is nothing like this, but rather just light that attracts all movement and change. It keeps the universe in this order, and it keeps the universe moving, but it is not an all-powerful being. It cannot intervene in human affairs, and quite possibly it wouldn't even have the knowledge of our existence. Aristotle argued that such a vast, infinite being as the prime mover would only think about itself, and would only know itself. I see. So when we put the prime mover in place, we can see good grounds to adopt Aristotle's theory of causation. It is an empirical theory using our own observations, and it does not rely too much on the metaphysics of God and trying to prove the nature of God. Okay, but there are still issues with Aristotle's theory of causation. What are they? Firstly, let's look at the approach. Aristotle is approaching his theory from an empiricist standpoint. He is using empirical understanding and the empirical senses to reach the truth. Yes. The problem is, empirical senses differ from person to person. We have seen this argument come up a lot in philosophy. People perceive the world in different ways. The means by which you are discovering the truth is not universal. Unlike a priori logic, a posteriori knowledge seems to come from a subjective standpoint. Right. So how can we start to try and get universal answers and understand the causes within our world if it can be argued that our starting point is subjective? Okay, certain things may be subjectively perceived, but I do not think we should dismiss all empirical knowledge. Look at the scientific breakthroughs we've had. This is done by perceiving and understanding the empirical world. Okay, fine. But I would then ask, is it really right to just take the standpoint that everything has a specific purpose or a delos that it tends to? Could perhaps things just happen by chance? If you look at the strict and organised patterns of change in our world, it seems difficult to agree that these are just down to chance. Well, if we take the Darwinian approach, then perhaps we can agree it is down to chance. With the theory of evolution and natural selection, over billions of years, the world has just been left with the organisms that were able to survive, grow and adapt to their environment. This is not necessarily a perfectly organised planet where everything has a purpose, but rather the only things that manage to survive in an infinite universe of randomness. So, we can say nothing really has a purpose or a direction or delos. 
billions of things have come in and out of existence for no reason whatsoever. We have just managed to perceive the leftovers that were lucky enough to survive by chance and chance alone. Interesting. And finally, I have to disagree with the concept of a prime mover. Aristotle is essentially describing God, but at the same time he's kind of not. I'm having trouble with the idea that the prime mover, the being responsible for the continual existence of the universe, is a being that cannot intervene, a powerless being who is also ignorant of our existence or of any existence within the universe. How can we reduce the concept of God to such a weak and ignorant being? I think if you're trying to put a God in place, the prime mover does not do well in defining it. Very well. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. Let us know what you think. Did you like Aristotle's theory of causation? Do you agree with the concept of a prime mover? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon.